Okay, so now we are going to talk about uh, variable length prefix encoding and uh, Huffman codes. So the motivation for this problem is that given a um, um, set of symbols, we normally use the fixed length encoding strategy of referring to each of those symbols. So for example, if you're given uh, the ASCII characters, right, we know each ASCII character is represented with 8 bits. So if you have a text, say something like this, you represent A with its ASCII value in 8 bits, P with its ASCII value in 8 bits, another P 8 bits, L 8 bits and so on. So you have like a sequence of 8 bits. Also, uh, if you're given, say, a binary sequence, something like this, then if you want to find out what is in this binary sequence, we go 8 bits at a time, right? So we group this 8 bits and see what is this. Then we group these 8 bits and see what is this, refer to the ASCII value and we group these eight bits and see what is this <coughs> and so on right so this is the simple strategy to encode and decode bits um, information in a file or any message now the weakness with this approach is not all these characters or symbols are appearing at the same frequency so if you have uh, characters that really don't appear at all or very rarely appear for example the non-printable ASCII characters are very rarely used right so in order to account for all these possible characters we consider the worst case and assign the number of bits so for example at most you can have 256 characters so that's why we end up using 8 bits for each right now among these 256 characters if you know certain characters um, don't appear at all or appear very rarely then it may not be worth to assign 8 bits and increase the overall length for every character okay so the idea is to use what is called variable length encoding where the more frequently appearing characters are given um, uh, shorter code length and the low freak um, the characters that appear at a lower frequency are given um, relatively longer code all right so if you know that uh, only a through Z are going to appear more frequently and all those special characters or star ampersand all these things are appearing low less frequently then it makes sense to assign shorter codes for A through Z and longer codes for the special characters right that's the idea now with this we have to be a little careful because now if you have a binary sequence, some binary sequence um, like this, since each character can appear with a uh, different uh, with codes of different length, how do we parse this file of binary of bits, right? So what we need to be able to do is. Uh, so when I pass it from left to right, this sequ the, uh, sequence of binary bits that I come across, right, should not be a prefix of something else. Alright, so this, if I scan through this from left to right, I can say this is a binary code then this should not be a prefix for anything else so in this case this will not be probably a binary code so for example this then could be a possible bin variable length binary code the idea is that no if once I say that 001 is 
the binary code for a character then no other character can have 001 as the prefix of its binary code which means which means what no character can have something like this 01001 0, 0, 1, the same prefix as this then followed by some bits no character can have such binary code okay so this idea is what is called prefix free coding okay so another example if some character if a character has 010 or 001 for example as its binary code then no other character can have 001 followed by anything any num any bit sequence as its binary as uh, as its binary code which means so in general no uh, but the binary code of a character cannot be the prefix of the binary code of another character Okay. So that is the idea behind prefix free coding. Right? Now <clears throat> um, Hoffman code is one the standard algorithm to create prefix free coding. Now the idea behind prefix free coding and variable length encoding is we could as I said use fewer bits for more frequently appearing characters and that's what we're going to do it here. Let's say we are given this five symbols or characters in general you can call symbols to be more very uh, generic um, and so let's say these are the five symbols in your symbol set so whatever you are trying to represent in your file you can represent only say using these five symbols. Okay, so let's say this is a frequency of appearance of the symbols. So A is appearing 35% of the time, B is appearing 10% of the time, C is appearing 20%, D appearing 20%, and this um, blank space appearing 15% of the time. All right, so we want to find out the variable length code for these five symbols using this Hoffman algorithm. Okay, so what we do is we kind of first write this frequency in the increasing order uh, so 0 0.1, 0 0.15, 0 0.2, 0 0.25 and the corresponding symbols so now we group the two low frequency symbols which is 0 0.1 and 0 0.15 so they add up to 0 0.25 so again we try to maintain things in increasing order so now this 0 0.2, 0 0.2 things appear first and then this 0 0.25 the combined one so when you combine the lower one becomes the left child and the larger uh, core uh, frequency value becomes the right child okay and then you have this 0.35 so now between these four we want to combine the smallest two which is this 0.2 and 0.2 so when you combine them you get 0.4 uh, which is here because the other two are 0.25 and 0.35 so you have now 0.4 and 0.2, 0.2 the C and D as the left and right child nodes so this is what it is when you have the uh, at the end of the second iteration now you can combine the next smallest two uh, symbols which is 0.25 and 0.35 so when you combine it becomes 0.6 so it is after this 0.6 so um, <coughs> You have this becoming the left child, which is this, and this becoming the right child, which is this. So now we are combining these two, these should add up to one, and this becomes your left child here, and this becomes your right child over here. Okay, so this is now what is called your Hoffman uh, tree uh, for your binary codes. Now, how to assign the actual binary codes for the symbols? Start from the root, you have two branches everywhere or so what you do is you go 0 1 
okay so always the left branch gets a zero the right branch gets a one so the left branch is zero go here the left branch is zero right branch is one so the right branch is one here the left is zero right is one and then left is zero right is one so now what you do <coughs> for each symbol the binary code is going to be the path that you traverse from the root towards that symbol so for C, the binary code is going to be the path this 0, 0. So that's the binary code for C. For D, it's going to be 0, 1, 0, 1. For A, it's going to be 1, 1. For B, it's going to be 1, 0, 0. That's for B. And for C, it's going to be 1, 0, 1. So that is going to be for the underscore. Okay, so these are the five symbols in the corresponding variable length course you see some have two bits and some have three bits and uh, you see notice that the more frequently operating symbols have two bit sequence like 0 0.35 0 0.2 and 0 0.2 and the low frequently appearing uh, symbols appearing at the lower frequency have um, three bit sequence like this okay so now we calculate the average number of bits per symbol it's going to be two bits for this symbol with a frequency of 0.35, three bits for this symbol with a frequency of 0.1, two bits for this symbol with a frequency of 0.2, two bits for this symbol with a frequency of 0.2, and three bits for this symbol with a frequency of 0.15. So if you do all this math, two times 0.35 plus three times 0.1, two times 0.2, 0.2, and 0.415, you will get 2.25 bits per symbol. So this is what it is with um, the Huffman coding or variable length encoding. Now, if we were to give a fixed length encoding for these five symbols, you have five symbols, so you need log five to the base two with a f seal. So that's going to be uh, three symbols. So each of these will be given three symbols, right? So the compression ratio that you could achieve in general would be the average number of bits per symbol is 2.25 divided by this 3, 1 minus of this. Okay, so this is <coughs> the savings that you can get. 1 minus 0.25 over 3, which is 1 minus 0.75, so that's going to be 25%. So this is your compression ratio, right? Which means the kind of savings that you can get by using the variable length encoding scheme compared to the fixed length encoding scheme, okay? Now uh, let me go to uh, one of your question bank. Um, let's see. Uh, we have a question over here. Okay, so you do this Huffman coding, so again the same thing, you list them out in increasing order, combine these two, you get 0.25, so B and D are the left and right children, and then you have 0 0.15, 0 0.2, then 0.25, and 0.4 for A, now combine the smaller two, so 0 0.15 plus 0.2 is 0 0.35 coming over here, underscore and a C, and then we have 0 0.25 B and D, that is this and then a so combine these two you get 0.6 over here and then you have 0.25 and 0.35 as it is so now combine these two you get 1 and 0 0.4 0 0.6 like this so this is your Huffman binary code so the codes are a is getting 0 b is getting 1 0 0 c is getting 1 0 1 uh, no. yeah c is getting sorry 1 1 1 D is getting what one zero one the underscore is getting one one zero. So the average number of bits per symbol is going to be what? Point four times one bit plus point one times three bits plus point two times three bits plus point one five times three bits plus point one five times three bits. So that comes out to be 2.2 .2 bits. If you use variable and fixed length encoding, there are five symbols. So log 5 to the base 2, so it's going to be 3 bits. So the compression ratio is 1 minus 2.2 .2 over 3, that is 26.7% in general. Now, I could also have a question where I give you a character sequence and ask you to come up with the binary code sequence for them based on the thing that you derived here. 
So you see here A is 0, B is 1, 0, 0, A is again a 0, then C is 1, 1, 1, A is 0, B is 1, 0, 0, A is 0, D is 1, 0, 1. So once you're given a character sequence and once you've found your code assignment for the symbols or characters, then replace every each one with the corresponding binary codes. That's all it is. Now, the reverse of this. So here you are given a character sequence. You can find the binary sequence of it. The reverse is, of course, for this also you should be able to calculate the total number of bits in the binary, uh, the compression ratio. Uh, how many bits do you have? Three, four, five, eight, nine, twelve, sixteen. So use 16 bits for how many characters here? Eight characters. So if you have used fixer length encoding, there are eight characters. Each character takes up three symbols according to our uh, fixer length encoding scheme. So eight times three bits is 24 bits for this eight characters. So the compression ratio that you could achieve is going to be one minus 16 over 24. So 16 is what you have with variable length encoding, 24 is what you have with fixer length encoding. So 1 minus 16 over 24 is what is going to be your compression ratio. Now given uh, a binary sequence, you should be also able to get the character representing that. So how do you do that? So now that you know what is the what are the prefix free codes, <coughs> we can use this to find out what that binary sequence represents. So you just scan through it from left to right. So one zero, there's not there's nothing for one, there's nothing for one zero. So one zero zero is going to be your B. Then you have zero is going to be your A. Then one there's nothing like one. There's nothing like one zero, but one zero one is going to be your D. Then no one, no one one, but one one zero is going to be your underscore. Then no, there is a zero, so zero is a. There's no one, so one zero. There's nothing like that. One zero one is going to be your d, and then there's a zero that's going to be your, or well, this should have been an a. Right. Let me put it out here. You see this is a zero, right? So that should be an A. So this is an A. Okay. Right? <coughs> so once you determine your uh, kind of um, prefix free code, the Hoffman code, just go through the bit sequence, pass through it, and see the group of bits that can make up a symbol. Okay. So one by itself cannot be, the it's not a binary code because you see here the binary codes are 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. So then you see whether 1, 0 can make as a binary code, no. Then you figure out 1, 0, 0 as a binary code representing B. Then you see a 0, 0 as it is makes up a binary code. So 0 is going to be A. Then 1 as it is cannot make up a binary code. 1, 0, no. But 1, 0, 1 is a D. Okay. Similarly, 1 as it is not a binary code, then 1, 1, no, but 1, 1, 0 is an underscore. Okay. So that's how you do it.